right, we have new people in here, so I'll repeat the apologies from before. I am clearly not John Alvin Wilkins, though we both have lived in Taiwan at some point in our lives, including currently. Um, I will not repeat the joke I told before. Um, John Wilkins is currently sick and unable to give his talk. This is a fill-in talk, uh, which is mostly conversational and largely participatory about front end, about existential crises in front end, about what the hell we're doing in front end. Um, uh, this is a much bolder uh, uh, abstract than I gave five minutes ago. Um, John's talk will be rescheduled for tomorrow, provided he feels better. He currently has food poisoning, which you probably did not want to know. He probably didn't want you to know either, and it would make a really bad talk if you were puking up here. So if you're welcome, you're welcome to stay. We'll have a conversation uh, about front-end things, um, mostly you guys talking, more so than me, because nobody wants to hear that. Um, and if you want to leave and go to a different session, you know, w this, this 10 tracks wide, um, I will not be offended in the slightest bit. Uh, but there's a mic over there. And because people keep walking in and walking out, we might as well just start because I have to apologize all the time anyway. Um, thank you. All right. Um, this is a fill-in session for John Alvin Wilkins' talk, which will be tomorrow. Uh, I can't tell you exactly when because that's still being figured out, but we will have a makeup session for John's style guide's talk tomorrow. Um, so don't, don't leave disappointed unless you're leaving tomorrow. So again, formal apologies that um, I'm not John Wilkins. I'll do my best to speak and gesticulate like him. Uh, I'm not him. Um, like I said before, we're both from Taiwan. He currently lives in Taiwan. I was born in Taiwan. Um, if we ever, you know, decide to live in one place, we'd have to decapitate each other because there only can be one. Um, and we're here to talk about stuff because I was asked to do this literally th 45 minutes ago. I don't have a wealth of things to pr prepare. Oh, God, more people to apologize to. Damn it. Um, <laughs> all right. Ev everybody come in and I'll apologize to you all and we can start. Here, okay, well, we'll start. I'll just leave this slide up. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I'm n no, I'm not. Yeah, so, okay, everybody who just walked in and are continuing to walk in, I'm not John Alban Wilkins. This is a fill-in session for John because John is for food poisoning. He will be giving his talk tomorrow. Not quite sure when, probably in the afternoon. Check the schedule online. We will update it. We are having a conversation about front end as soon as people stop walking in and I can stop apologizing. Um, otherwise, um, you know, feel free to leave. I, I won't hate you forever. You know, so, you know, uh, if I were John Alvin Wilkins, I would be blonde, I'd have blue hair, um, and be really, really pale. Um, but his kids, but we'll keep talking about John because he's not here, right? His kids um, do, uh, his kids are, are, are uh, like TV actors. They do like uh, Taiwanese variety shows. And, you know, they speak um, <laughs> amazing Chinese, amazing Taiwanese, amazing English with like, you know, perfect American accents. I'm super jealous of them, actually. Um, well, that's what it's going to turn into. It's going to be like 30 minutes on YouTube of me apologizing to everybody walking in um, before we can actually start talking. You know, I'm just going to start talking. If people hate what we're saying, they can just forget it, you know. Okay, last, last chance to apologize. I'm not John Wilkins. This is not John Wilkins' talk. John Wilkins' talk has been rescheduled for tomorrow since he has food poisoning. We are going to talk about front end. Oh, and, no, I, I know, right? It's shocking. Uh, I, we're going to talk about some front end things. There's a microphone there. I encourage people to come up to the microphone uh, and speak about this because uh, I am not the end-all authority of front-end, as everybody knows. Um, and so let's talk about some stuff. Um, we're both from Taiwan. Talk about stuff. Okay. Um, I'm just going to start asking questions now. Um, who are we? All right. Who in your um, – okay, we'll do some show of hands stuff. Who here labels themselves a designer, you know, whether by title or by affiliation? You're a designer. Um, who calls yourself uh, a developer? And th this is what you would call yourself, not necessarily what your card says. Um, who, who, when you, people ask you what you do outside of DrupalCon, call themselves themers? Does the word themer have meaning outside of the Drupal context to you? Okay. Okay, well, WordPress. Okay, so outside of the CMS space, if somebody, if you got into a cab, um, let's say, you know, an Uber, let's say, this morning, and somebody asked you what you do for a living, would you say themer? No. Okay. Well, what would you say instead of themer? Okay, why is that? Okay, that, that's a rhetorical question. We'll leave it at that, right? Okay, all right. What do we do? Okay, so what do we actually do? So who here actually touches uh, image compositional uh, tools like Photoshop, um, you know, Sketch or whatever? Okay, uh, who uses that as their primary tool? All right, whose primary tool is more, uh, let's say, text editor, code editor? Okay, um, who uses both, say, about evenly? Fewer than I thought. Okay. Um, 
th there's a long conversation to be had, and I'm going to stop apologizing now. Um, so we're, we're already talking. I'm not John Wilkins. Um, this is not going to be John Wilkins' talk. That's going to be given tomorrow. But we're still talking about front end, so we're happy if you can stay. Um, there's this notion of what should we be doing? I, and, I, and John Wilkins' session is actually based on this idea, you know, that what we're doing isn't very efficient, and it's a rough approximation of getting this design idea out of our brains and onto the web and, and sort of figuring out all these intermediate steps that, quite frankly, suck and don't fit well together right now. It's, you know, we're, we're making rough stone tools to chip other stones that look more like the thing we want, and we're just knocking, it's all stone, it, it's all stone knocking, you know, it's not actually making the thing we want. It, it's all these rough approximations. Um, oh, you have a question. Go ahead, please. Not a question. Mm -hmm. I develop user interaction okay. with technology. Okay. Any, any way that somebody, the user is going to interact with a screen, whether it be a touch screen or just visual or whatever, mm -hmm. I develop that interaction. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, so, by the way, if you guys want to step up, and retort or ask me questions. I just have like 10 minutes of just this at the beginning and then just sort of as to feed the conversation. Um, and I'm going to stop apologizing now for all the new people in here. So um, there's this idea of what's difficult and what's easy. What's currently hard about our jobs? What's easy about our job? What's the hardest thing? Okay, I'm just going to point at random people. What's the hardest thing right now about your job, no matter what your title may be? Okay. <laughs> you got it. Good call. Nick, another thing that's hard. User content. Marketing. Mar oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Kevin. Designing for something with like no visual interface. Okay. Designing things with no visual interface. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Anything else? Hard. Hard. Ad providers. Ad providers. Okay. Uh, somebody in the back. Figuring out what a client needs and getting it on the page. Okay. Uh, politics. politics. Yes. What's that? Support from, the top. Support from the top. Okay. So, conversely, what's easy about our jobs right now? Good tools. Okay. Sass. What's that? Collaboration. Okay. Slack. Okay. Slack is easy to use. Yeah. Build tools. Okay. Um. So, thinking about that for a second, what do we want? to do, aside from what's hard and what's easy, what, what is it that we actually want to do? Please our clients. Great answer. Fix Drupal's markup. Fix Drupal's markup. Okay. Wait, so let, let's take that. Fix Drupal's markup so that... So that... One last apology, just Morton walked in. I'm not John. This isn't John's session. We're having a conversation about front end. John's session will be re-given tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but we're still having a conversation about front end anyway. You're welcome to stay or leave, except for Morton, who, you know, whatever. You're, 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 you're allowed to stay. That's fine. You're, you're expected to stay. Yeah. So between what we are currently doing, what we – should be doing and what we want to do, this isn't very well aligned currently in the front end space, nor, you know, you could really say ever been in the front end space. There's a lot of, you know, what we are currently doing, which is the best approximation of maybe what we quote unquote should be doing, which may not be what we want to do at all. Um, and this is a fundamental tension in the front end space that I personally have struggled with for almost eight years, and it feels like, you know, Morton, uh, John, if John were giving his session, this would be a great theme, that, uh, theme, huh, uh, about his talk, is that it's never quite good enough, is it? Tools, it's never quite good enough. It's never quite the design that wants to be on the web. It's never quite uh, 
the realization of that platonic ideal that you as a designer, you as a front-end developer, you as a UI developer want to have. Um, and resolving that tension has been very, very hard. Uh, how many people went to, to Morton's talk yesterday about theming in front, okay. How many people went to Steve Persh's talk about uh, the, the history of, of rendering HTML? Did you, how many people have worked with Drupal more than four years? Uh, does it feel like it's getting better or worse? Better. better. Okay, wh why is it getting better? Oh, well, how is it better? So people in the front said you, you're better. Twig, okay. Embracing other dip disciplines, that's a great answer. What else? Is it, I mean, is part of it you personally getting better as a developer too? Okay, that, 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 that's totally a thing as well. Going back to the question of if things are getting better or worse for you personally, how many of you here feel the pressure to become more back-endy as you get longer and longer in Drupal? How many people have resisted the urge to get more back-endy? So those of you who didn't resist the urge, at what point do you no longer feel like you're, do you still feel like front-end developers as you get further and further back into the stack? Because you have to, you do it because you have to, for no other reason. Can I ask you one? Can, can I ask you to stand and face the audience? Would that be okay? Yeah. Thank you. front-end developer. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, one at a time, guy. Here, here go, go ahead, yeah. Hey, could you stand and, and thank you. Okay, 
You stole her. Here, Jer Jeremy, go ahead. Here, in green shirt in the back. You, that's you. You. Yeah. Here, can you stand up? Over here, there was a. a, a It's 11 o'clock. Here, go, go, yep, stand up. So taking, let's walk that back up. Oh, oh, go ahead.
So. Uh, let me back this up like a little bit more here. Okay. So. Who started here in front end development by accident? Oh, yeah, so you just sort of slid into it. Who, who started as a site builder and then had to, went to front end development, sort of forced into it because nobody else did it? Okay. Who, who, who sort of slid into front end development through the, the, the gates of design, having to implement your own designs? Okay. How many of you here actually have a CS degree? <laughs> right. So th there's an interesting thing going out here in this space. I, I don't know what the breakdown would be if we asked this question in, say, uh, a, a back end, se a quote unquote back end session. Um, I think the numbers are probably different. I think the, the, the history of people coming into front end is, is much different than that of people who you know, stick and stay with back end. Um, who here feels that front end is too back endy now? Like who, re who regrets having to learn engineering principles and or PHP and wish that they didn't learn it? Regrets or resents? Oh, both. <laughs> yeah, regret, you know, who? Who, yeah, who here re regrets or resents having to learn this PHP and or, okay. Um, I have this idea, and feel free to debate with me on this, and you know, there's a microphone there if you want to be amplified so you don't have to stand up and embarrass yourself um, or whatever. Um, but even, uh, who here is actually, okay, let, let's back it up even more. Who here has worked with a front-end presentational tool, a modern pre uh, front-end presentational tool, be it, um, you know, a PHP one or a, a JavaScript one, an Angular, an Ember uh, out there. Does that, do these feel harder or easier than Drupal? Why are they easier? No, go ahead, step, step to the mic, homie. It's yours. <laughs> Just don't try. <clears throat> okay, so one thing I found really interesting is like this whole concept of headless Drupal, decoupling the back end from the front end. Um, because, for instance, like usually when I think of, of front end, I'm thinking of like design. I'm thinking of presenting code. Like I get, for instance, like a layout or something like that from Photoshop from designers. And I'm thinking of how to create a user experience for that. And um, to do that, I need data. Now with Drupal, it's like I, I get this data, but okay. So some of these blocks are in like sidebars and this and that, and like all these other areas. Like there's all this this overlay from how Drupal presents information. It's like I don't really feel like there's a clean way to just say, give me all the data that belongs to this node that's going to be put out on this page. I don't really care where it goes because I'm going to determine where it goes. So when we start getting the headless Drupal, then I'm just like, hey, okay, I'll put out a bunch of Ajax requests for all the different areas where I know where things are, the data is going to be pulled into and where I'm going to put it. Um, whereas I feel like right now, like when someone has gone to the panels or they've gone into like the blocks and stuff and they've set up all this stuff, like like I kind of have to know all this information of the theme layer to say, okay, where is stuff actually gonna go? And oops, you know, I don't want the sidebar. Oh, well that blocks in the sidebar. Okay, well let me you know okay. maybe that's a little bit of uh, you know, inexperience on my end, but I feel like in general it's easier with a lot of these uh, you know, like Angular and the mean stack and stuff like that, because I just get to say, where's my data? What data do I want, and how am I going to present it? And I don't really have to worry about where it belongs or who put it where, or, you know, stuff like that. But your clients don't have expectations of being able to put things where they want then. Um, like I said, I usually get something like, say, like a Photoshop layout or, or you okay, know, yeah, yeah. something mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that, and they're just like, this goes here, that goes there, that goes here, you know, stuff right. like that. And, and sometimes it's not necessarily how it was quite built on the back end, and so you're mm -hmm. sort of starting okay. to move things around. When you're using like a, a, a specifically JavaScript application that's trying to do some really cool stuff, don't you need some like magic tooling to help that, like Solar? Or yeah, there's templates, but like I said, I feel, mm -hmm. so templates really aren't the problem as much as I just want data, and I really don't care where it came from. I just want to know what the data is, and I'm going to put it where I'm going to put it. W Five second background. Sorry. How did you come into web development, and what, what, where did you come from before Drupal? Um, basically, uh, for web development, I mean, I was, you know, just, uh, I mean, I started in college, I guess. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, most of it's the JavaScript, HTML, CSS stuff, and okay. then I've started working with Drupal because uh, my company basically said, hey, we're going to do CMS now, and okay. so we're working with Drupal, so. Cool. Thank you. So um, to answer that question of why 
those frameworks are easier. It's they they do a I think a much more effective job of communicating what this tool does not do. And Drupal maybe has some sometimes an identity crisis because it's so modular that if you wanted to add functionality that it doesn't currently do, well, guess what? We can now attempt to at least make that functionality. So it's the great sort of burden, but also promise of, of Drupal, um, which is leveraging the community to find out, all right, I want to do something. Well, probably somebody wanted to do something front end, maybe before these frameworks came about. And now not only is somebody going to step up and build modules for it, but often we have half a dozen modules for it. Sure. And then that becomes a whole different different thing. So um, I don't know if it's good or bad. I have mixed feelings about it. I'm, a, I'm a more of a right, right tool for the job. And if Drupal is it, then that's great. But uh, it does muddy up that, that discussion of, well, what is the right tool for the job if there's so many tools out there? So that's um, – so let's say a using Angular as, as an example, I'm, I'm not going to use that to – you know, try to to do heavy heavy things in terms of trying to trying to grab stuff for the database, or I don't you know I don't know what support it has for like caching or things of that nature, right? Sure. It it doesn't promise that, so I won't use it for that, and I'll never expect it from it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it depends on the client, but. So, like, they create content, and that's the content that we're going to get exactly how, like, they don't have any control. So, if I want this in the sidebar, I want this in the main content area, like, it's, it's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably get more demands for responsive than I do the flexibility of layout. So the moment you you do that, of course, the, those both. tools, I yeah. Mean, like you do both. Right, right, right. But the desire. Right. So give it, just let's give Wes a shot here. Yeah, go for it. Go sure. For it. Yeah. Uh, so my background, I started out as a designer and I worked on enterprise CMSs, the big air quotes there. So I've come from things like Tridian, Sitecore, Ektron, terrible, 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 terrible tools. And uh, I, I, I think that uh, working in Drupal, yeah, there's a lot of like things that are a giant headache, and you have a lot of freedom, and that can totally bite you in the ass. But um, I actually, I, I love it because it, it is trying to accomplish probably too much sometimes. <laughs> but um, I'd rather, I'd rather be able to like uh, mess up and and just like you know break something than have a system that is totally like this is my content store, and you can't. I'm just gonna give you this. And you can do like a couple things, and then it's like, oh God, the client wants this flexibility. How on earth am I going to do that? Um, yeah, so I actually find that Drupal is is way better than things than, that try to do similar tasks. When I'm working with, you know, some enormous website that gets way too many visits a day. So yeah, little perspective. Tridian costs a four hundred thousand dollars for the license, and it's like this is a giant turd. Like when I buy it and I turn it on, 
Like, I have nothing. I have nothing. I have no quality of life as a developer. I have no quality of life as far as, like, there's a web page I can look at. That all has to be done. It's like, okay, now I begin the two-year process of building a website. Hooray! Like, it is the worst. Like, I'd rather have something set up that's like, oh, I got too many divs. <laughs> like, oh, my God, I need to build everything from scratch. Um, and not only that, the community, like these these companies that charge four hundred thousand dollars for a uh, CMS, like how many developers do you think they have, honestly, that know what they're doing? Like, it's 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 close to none. It's it's really really bad. So, you know, I'd rather have something open source where I'm enabling other people to make cool stuff and all that kind of warm fuzzies. And you know, there are people that really know what they're doing, that have been able to accomplish a lot, and I can see how they do it. And everyone's pretty open, so it's pretty cool. Thanks. I'm a back-end developer. Oh, oh. Well, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> but I like shiny things. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Uh, just rolling back to the question of, uh, like, are, are the JavaScript frameworks more difficult? I, I did actually find them sort of difficult. Mm -hmm. And that also comes from a project where I was delving into Rails. And there's... The key factor there of convention, and I think that's what makes things easy, because I found Rails extremely easy. It makes sense. It's well documented. Once you get around the idea of convention, because the, the first look at it, everything is like magic, like how does this get there, but by following convention. <laughs> and I, I think maybe that's some of the problems that we face in Drupal. And because, because Rails is opinionated, and Drupal isn't. Yeah, I, and with such a huge community, maybe it's hard to be so opinionated. Uh, it seems like we are becoming a little bit more opinionated and also more open because we're accepting the conventions from outside. And that that looks definitely much more promising for Drupal 8. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But yeah, oh. JavaScript, on the other hand, there's so many different ways you can do it. So if you're looking at, oh, what do I do now? It's like, well, are you doing CopyScript require JS? So yes. that that's the problem I face there. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to address the, the flexibility issue with, with Drupal as, as being a downside, because to me that's the reason why I got into Drupal and, and why I love it so much. I never saw it as a downside. I think the fact that it's flexible, I mean, you don't have to use the flexibility, but you have the ability to and when I'm when I'm starting on a project I even on the front end I never start with with the design or what it's going to look like I start with what is the experience that I'm creating and that in that uh, you know influences what the design is going to be but it's also going to influence the back end which is why I ended up getting dragged into the back end and becoming more of a developer because there were features and things that I wanted on the front end and well damn it I'll just do it myself right do you feel like, as a developer, you seem dragged into being a developer? Are, are you forced to be something that you feel that you're not? Um, I didn't think I was, I guess, mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, initially, but I mean, it was some cool stuff. It's not that I don't okay. enjoy it to some degree at the, at this point. There's I'm parts not, that, that wasn't a leading not. question. Uh, I I, no. I, have, I do have an opinion on, on I think <laughs> this sort of dev this back endiness of front end, uh -huh. um, but it's not a necessarily a negative one. No, and, and I don't think it is because it's, you know, I, I, I mean, and this is me, I like solving problems and I like solving visual problems and, you know, experiential problems, but, but you know, sometimes that leads to problems on the back end that are just as sure. interesting. So, mm -hmm. thanks. So, I'm a, I'm a front end uh, developer who uh, works with Drupal a lot, but have, you know, over the years have had that frustrations with the markup. And I think that one of, one of the things that's really interesting about uh, what's going on now is there's this headless thing. I really like the idea of headless. I'm not for or against it. I think um, you guys are what you guys are talking about was interesting argument. I can think of solutions where if the client wanted that flexibility to move things around, I, I think that could be done in the front end. But um, more what I wanted to say was just kind of like more of a philosophical thought of how Drupal has given us markup that's kind of a pain but we go to the other end of the spectrum of wanting to do away with the markup entirely and just do it all ourselves, which is kind of interesting. But I think also Drupal's good in that it offers us a lot of solutions to problems that we may not think of, like um, 
internal site search uh, is the first thing that comes to mind, or being able to sort things, archive them, forgetting passwords, logins. And that's something that if we were to do on the front end, um, though certainly possible, um, requires a lot more work for us up front. So I think those are things that as fronters we, we can kind of take for granted um, in a platform. So. Mm -hmm. No one's ever going to agree, I th and things are always going to change. So if we, have, if we have to rely on something that's in core three years later when the new best thing comes out, then it's just going to be a thorn on our side. Uh, there was a thing from Drupal Talk last year where he had a slide that had length of time Drupal 7 as a count and all the frameworks that have come and gone in that time. So if you put something in... It's, it's, it's somewhere on my hard drive here. <laughs> I think also there's there's different I think also there's different tools for different projects too. So I mean I use Backbone for a lot of stuff because it's really simple, but then something like Angular or Ember for a much more large scale one page app may be more appropriate. So it's just kind of using the tool belt and Go ahead. Uh, I mainly came from HTML, CSS, some JavaScript, so mm -hmm. I was, you know, jumped directly into Drupal. And my problem mostly has been documentation. If I have to say add classes to like the navigation li elements, then I have to go <laughs> dump into the preprocessor, and there may be documentation. I couldn't find it, and what I could find didn't give me an examples that I could understand to do what I needed to do. So I guess Ooh. that's part of the problem, but yeah. Let's, let's. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, hey guys, we got more people on the mic. More people on the mic. More, more people Actually, on the this mic. is perfect timing because I, I would love to contribute to that. So one of the things that I think can really help with documentation um, that my company has been doing is we get college students excited and interested in open source because it's something that they don't even have a language for yet in, in the education system. And here you have this huge group of kids who are super eager to get in. They want to get their feet wet. They want to get some kind of notoriety and name recognition. 
And so one of the things we've been talking to college students about is like, okay, get into open source. If you, you see something that's lacking in documentation is a great way to start. Go through each step by step. If you see something wrong, go back in and fix it. Open a bug report. Here's how you do it. And there's a couple of tools online that they can use now that really help um, them get through and like they can have a mentor and kind of get started. So I think like promoting that as you go through, if you meet college students, promoting that open source involvement, it's the easiest way for them to put something on their resume. I mean, if you don't have an internship, if you don't have a job yet, just start contributing code to open source, for sure. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, and so I think kind of, I'm going to step away from the documentation back to the JavaScript sure. framework yeah. and things like yeah. Angular. Sure. So I think the biggest thing we see is like that we're talking about that delineation between the front end and back end developers where, you know, I consider myself more of a full stack developer. I do UX, wireframes, things like that, but I'm also in the database. And and I think that's starting to become pretty common. Part of it is the Drupal 7 model where kind of things get kind of wishy-washy, spaghetti code, intertwined, everything's kind of together. And what I think the benefit of that is people having to do both is what you're seeing with these JavaScript frameworks is something that we've been seeing on the back end with things like Rails or database abstractions. So you're dealing with like these abstractions on the back end that we've had for years. The front end developers are now kind of catching up to this. So these frameworks are all just abstractions. So you do not have to write necessarily every single HTML element or something, or you're using a template engine or Angular or jQuery to do your animations. Because these things to do it all manually and responsive on 25 different screens is really hard. It's a really hard thing to do. So now we're seeing these abstractions kind of flow flow forward. And so now you have things like Angular and jQuery where you can do these things, write it, you know, what would have taken you two weeks to do maybe by hand can now be done in 15 minutes or an hour. So you're really seeing this whole kind of, you know, the two the two are feeding into each other. The back end developers are learning things from the front end developers and the front end developers are kind of teaching the, the or the back end developers are teaching the front end developers all about these abstractions. So you get these whole new sets of tools because of that, you know, mishy mushy kind of thing where we have to do both because then someone sees, oh, they're doing it this way, you know, over here it would be really cool if we had something like that for the front end. So right. I mean I think I think that delineation is sometimes, you know, a little bit arbitrary, and it kind of it can be good at times because you need people to specifically work on things. But at other times, having that wishy-washy situation may actually be a huge benefit, you know, a hidden benefit that we wouldn't see. So, thank you. Uh, I, just as a point, uh, I want something I wanted to say before, and maybe chimes into the hey, where does the front end and the back end end? I feel like for a lot of people, and this is not to call anybody out here who may feel this way, is back end is where the hard stuff is. I don't do the hard stuff, right? <laughs> so if it's hard, it's back end development. If it's easy or if it fits into my talent suite, it's front end development because I'm a front end developer and this is what's natural to me. And I think um, I do have a zinger for this to tie it all up so we're not leaving on like a bitchy moment. Um, but. Um, <laughs> I'll let a couple of these guys here, but the idea that the back and the front end have this clear delineation in Drupal and say, I only live in the themes folder and these other guys live in the modules or, you know, whatever folder uh, is a false one. And it's not because Drupal is terribly over-engineered or mis-engineered, uh, because one would have to write just as much complex JavaScript for their front end app if they were writing, you know, an MPC app um, versus, um, you know, Drupal. You don't have the luxury of just doing HTML, even if you're working with Angular. And so this idea that there's a front end and a back end and there's a clear delineation of, of, of responsibilities and, and concerns is, I think, a false one going forward. But go ahead. So kind of going back to the, I think this was the initial question. We might have deviated a few times since then. But sure. um, what makes or potentially makes these external systems easier than Drupal, um, or if they are, I, I think for me is consistency. And this is something we're definitely solving in Drupal 8 with Twig, but for mm -hmm. right now, front-end development is, is it a template? Is it a theme function? Um, if I want to change this markup, the, the one that comes to mind is, I think it's like a theme, theme menu or theme menu treat. Basically, you get a hard-coded UL with right, a string right. and no context for anything else. And so you start having to get into some really hacky things where... Um, we're just kind of all over the place in terms of convention, and a lot of these other systems offer, whether it's an opinionated one or not, they offer one solution. 
Um, and that's something that it seems like we're really, or doesn't seem we are really trying to fix in Drupal 8, but right now in Drupal 7, that's what's making a lot of these other systems a lot more appealing. Okay, thank you. I kind of want to follow up on what you were saying. Um, so when I got involved with Drupal development, it was a lot of here's a Photoshop file, here's a model for how we're organizing the content, and some poor soul is in between trying to migrate that process. So obviously what Drupal is putting out comes first, and then we get that into whatever presentation layer. But it seems now, for instance, we went to a system where we're like, hey, we like this convention. Let's use this convention. We're going to put together some starter themes that we're going to use with our clients. Um, and that started dictating backwards um, how we were organizing content within Drupal in the mm -hmm. back end. And then that's great until someone decides, hey, let's move to block element modifier and suit CSS, and we're going to go in that model. And all of a sudden, we have to go back now. And, and that's kind of an issue we're having because conventions are great, but they change constantly. And I want the new stuff. And so. Wait, and wait, 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 wait. Wait, don't, you, you can't bitch about conventions changing and yet want the new stuff at the same time. <laughs> Right? I mean, it, it's, it's our own damn okay, fault. Let me clarify. <laughs> Best practices change. And, um, and now, I, I mean, that was great before, n before this point where now it, it's kind of like we have to go back and re-approach the content uh, because those conventions lock you in. So wh what's the price you pay if you don't go to the new stuff? I think... If you don't go BEM, what, 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 what's the loss if you don't go BEM, for example? Um, well, I think... But they're, they're not building your project. I mean, what, what's, what's the loss you face by not going BEM here? Um, do you mean moving to some new radically different convention? Sure, or, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think more than anything what we're finding is that we're, we're trying to look at conventions as a way to best roll out um, new sites. I, I don't want to say rapid development, mm -hmm. but kind of foundational development. And mm -hmm. then something comes along that kind of throws a wrench in it before you might be able to reorganize around, even around a new convention, whereas now because things have been moving back into the content so much, it's like you, ca you can't. Um, okay. I mean. Mm -hmm. Yep. Follow up. So yeah, you, 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 it's new toys. You don't get to play with the new toys. Somebody else is playing with new toys, and you're playing with your wooden ones. Yeah. But Dude, dude on the end here. Hey, stand up, stand up. Yeah, yell at them. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you, you, oh, well, you, did you want to say something? Drupal 8 and they know Drupal 8 
You, let, let's let some of these two guys. All right, right first and then left. So it, left. Can you stand up? Could you stand up? In the front, too. Yeah, go ahead. Stand up. So we, we literally have we, we have five more minutes, and there are two very patient people behind Stoller, um, which I would like to have them. Okay, go ahead. You, you have 30 seconds, Jeremy. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to bring up a completely different topic, and we've been talking about a lot of uh, front end, back end, and all of that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as a f f as someone doing front end development, the back end was never my That's pain point. That's a great point. way to put it. That's a great way to put it. What? As someone doing front end development, so it's yes. something you do. It's not something you are. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the the back end has never been my pain point. It's the the back back end. It's it's the infrastructure stuff. You know, if there's something I hate more than anything else, it's being a system administrator. And <laughs> so, um, <laughs> all right. So th t tools, all, all these new tools and everything that are coming out to support front end development, which I think is fabulous and great that people are paying attention to it and that this stuff is happening. But now with the task runners and the build tools and the package managers and the uh, you know, constant, yeah. uh, continual integration and automated testing and stuff like that, which all requires configuration and and all of that, and having to deal with that makes my head want to explode half the time. You sounds like you need a back-end developer. I, oh, <laughs> right. So wait, I I, I, I I have to give the so I have to give this room up. But I, I, if there's anything I want you guys to think about, I have a rhetorical question, which is my total zinger. But people are leaving, which sucks. But my zinger was, um, if you think things have changed. Um, I, I want to hear people's opinions, and I'm at Eatings on Twitter if you want to hit me, E-A-T-I-N-G-S. -E um, has Drupal changed? Have you changed? Has the game changed? I'll leave it at that. All right, thanks, everybody. <laughs>